and welcome to Plug Pop. This is the unboxing phase. We have right here a shipment from NewTypeHQ.com. Use a promo code from a favorite YouTuber because I'm not one of those guys yet. We have in this box today, and I gotta be careful, nice and careful, making sure that everything is still in frame as I adjust my viewfinder. I will show you the moves. The money moves. The stuff that some of your big boys won't even look at. Mecha Guy Kotsu didn't touch it. Zaku Aurelius didn't touch it. Your boy Zappa all up in there. This is. Oh, hey, what is this? Hold up. Hey, I have a new type sticker now. I can put that on one of my binders. Uh, thank you for your order. We love our customers. Be it new type, believe our products are a means of expression that is missing in our ever increasing digital world. By shopping with us now, it allows us to support your ability to express yourself, but allow us to reach others who share similar desires. We hope to continue serving you. Perhaps. But, let's get to the main feature. This is the high grade. 1300 Magnasaur from Gosor. Uh, Psycho Keto Gosor. That's, that's the show. Mm. Looks like in this bag here we have some arm parts, uh, some accessories and joints, a um, uh, head, maybe some side skirts here, definitely some arms, maybe some tail pieces. That's a gun. Uh, we have all of our stickers here, which makes sense. <coughs> Sorry, I just recently finished lunch. This black piece looks like it might be some feet here. Uh, there's obviously some waist parts there. And on this back side, we got what is probably thighs and feet. Over here looks like a bunch of dinosaur parts from the T-Rex. More gun. Uh, accessories. We have clear parts for a head gem. Some green clear parts. Uh, probably in the chest there. There's a dinosaur foot. We have some more clear accessories for the dinosaur and the chest piece. There's a sword back here. That's for some transformation parts. This is going to be very likely a storage base for the pieces that aren't in use. And this is easily some joints. And we have here a stand. Pre-included. So I definitely appreciate that. That's an action base five, I believe. Four is the larger of the two. Getting that out of the way, let us behold this manual. Uh, oh, there's commentary on here. So give me a second. You can stare at these parts while I read this to you. I would like to thank everyone who enjoyed the high grade ghost sword. I'm sure you've endured all this time like Kenny Chitty when fighting at the North Pole, but the wait is over. Proudly presenting Revival Magna Sora, which is the name of the episode. Under the enthusiastic supervision of Sunrise, which works just as hard as Kinta, Bandai Spirit's hybrid division has used its ultimate technology to create high grade Magna Sora, which can Nedketsu Shinka and Nekensu Soul. Everyone knows that. Enjoy the kit with the high grade Gosora by recreating the Magna Tyreno, Magna Sora, Super Sora Jet, and Neketsubutso Magna Busta. Elzran says, what, do you what you are assembling is a high grade Magnasaur and everyone has a future of possibilities. Message from Takahiro Yamada, probably a director, a writer, some sort of. Uh, and the, ma the manual is featured throughout with commentary from several of the characters. This is the, uh, the teacher here. He plays a lot of important roles. Since building the, the Ghost Sword, I have watched the entirety of this show. It's a great show. Over here we've got some warnings. Now I'm going to move behind the camera now. You can see my shadow and the shadow of the camera. 
we have assembly more characters having some dialogue so this looks like general assembly for Magna Tyranno. Um, I guess this is a chess piece. It's not very clear. It's such a small stage. Ah, the upper torso. And then over here we get to building the leg which contains sword parts. Feet, as is tradition. Well, duh, I forgot they're freaking labeled. There's right leg up here. Uh, check. Use leg parts to lift up the leg joint. So I guess once it's inserted, you'll move it around after for assembly. Left leg assembly, followed by putting everything together. It seems like it, the Magnosaur itself is going to be a little like funky shaped, considering you have to go through a model kit to get to the Magnosaur assembly here. So here's assembly for the head, followed by some transformation, and using this base piece for storage of your extra parts. Which is a very genius thing to do. The Double Zeta also does a similar thing, where it uses a base piece for storing your extra bits. Uh, more assembly and transformation here. And final stage of, you know, the form. Now over here, we have the Magna Buster. One pre-assembled high-grade 1300 Ghost Sword sold separately set is required alongside this product to recreate Magna Buster. Guess what? Your boy has one. You're going to pop off the arms and legs and everything from the torso, some head and some wings, and store the torso, I see going to pull the arms apart, store those, pull some extra arms and legs apart for storage, and then you'll take the guns, reassemble them into the legs looks like, replace the backpack, you can even, uh, parts can be attached from that, yeah, and store this, store that backpack, I'm not sure if that's the piece for Gosaur or Magnosaur. And then combine them into the move. And then Solar Super Jet, which always likes to take from one form going into another. So you take the backpack off, doing some attachment work with the gun, reassembly, and you have this what well, looks like a hot mess, but because it's in black and white, it looks like a hot mess. And there's, you know, suggestion for which action base connector to use. We have color images on the back. A plus B equals C. So, in just a quick transition, we will get to the finished product over at the review zone, the other half of my room. So we'll see y'all in a few minutes. First up. Now that we've fully assembled your boy in record time, at least for me, uh, we have the Magna Tyranno. Uh, what I do want to cover before I get too far into talking about the T-Rex itself is there is a little bit of wasted plastic. We get this very curious tiny PC-22, but I only needed two polycaps for it and I believe they're somewhere inside of the legs or the tail back here. We also have a lot of leftover parts from this runner, which is a lot of torso and body parts from the Gosaur, as well as a lot of other joint parts therein. It has its own joint parts, but it still shares a tiny few here and there, you know, because Bandai likes to reuse what they can reuse. So, to discuss, the articulation, and I apologize for shaking the camera, of the Magna Tyranno, there is at least more than what you get for the three component parts of the Ghost Sword. Up here at the waist, you have an, a full 360 degree twist. You have some tiny, tiny arms right here. They go up and they are double jointed. 
So you've got the black and then you've got the white little joint there. They will fold up and inside of the screen section here. And we will already have a problem with this form. We will get to you. At the legs, you have some front kick there and these very strange attachment of the feet. But once we get that back in place there, sorry, you have some articulation in the front of the foot there. You have a little bit of back bend at the knee there and some forward. Now these are the legs for the Magnosaur, so you've got to have some articulation in the legs also just to have it poseable. The feet back here do move, excuse me, but there's really no point to that since they're just aesthetic and appealing. And once again, we will get to you. We will get to you now. Back here is a singular, like, rectangular plug. One plug that is meant to house this heavy machinery. Now, while this looks like it'd be a dope-ass weapon just to hold on its own, there are, at least on its own, no means of attaching it as a singular gun because these will be pieces for the arm in Magnosaur proper. But this one little peg is expected to house this, and while it does keep it balanced, you can see that it doesn't, like, even go in completely it just naturally wobbles now that's great for posing the tail side to side but it's terrible for keeping the damn thing in place what you do get a hefty amount of tail articulation right there Now fortunately that's very difficult to break. You just have to handle your business efficiently. Up here in the head, you've got a clear piece and just and the only two stickers that you're going to really see for the Tyranno Magna Tyranno, excuse me, are right here just as the eyes. So you can see it clear see clear through that dome. But what we will do is off screen because I've learned my lesson for trying to transform things on camera and I just, my setup and my camera and my butterfinger clumsy hands don't allow for very efficient and entertaining watching of me transform stuff when I have to get in front of the camera. But we'll be back in just a moment with Magnasaur. And here we go with the fully formed Magnasaur. And it's, you know, fighter mode. I mean, it's called the Magnasaur. Well, we have it posed up on the stand. Let's go ahead and get him right on off of there. Boop. And show that unlike most high grades or model kits these days, this stand slides in. I think that's more akin to a real grade or some master grades might do that. So it's very interesting to see that this does it, which might be a lesson learned from the Gosaur in the fact that it's got the one single 3mm peg and it's expected to balance all of that weight on that alone. So this is definitely a lot nicer. It also comes with its own stand. This one is a plain black stand, not the one it comes with. It actually came with the attachments for the uh, Action Base 4, which is the the larger, meant for 100 scales and such. Very interesting that it came with that, but I guess because they learned this boy be heavy. Getting all the stands out of the way, let us talk about the all-important stickers. <sighs> Most of the stickers are very well hidden. You have one in here in the chest, and as I dig through the box of parts that I forgot to uh, unbury the sticker sheet. It comes, the alternative is a flat black, a flat plain silver 
but inside there is a bit that you see during some of the transformations and some of the special moves there's just a little bit of detail in there and these are also clear green parts that push in from the back while this pushes in from the front very clever uh, the only other stickers of note are here in the front of the legs which are of course color correcting but they're like multicolor stickers so I like to think it kind of gets a pass for that one and then of course these shoulder friends up here which are the two-sided kind of stick you know sandwich wrap around situation no stickers in the eyes making sure it's all green and blue clear parts in there please focus camera I know you can do it thank you very much that's a very tiny blue piece in here and there are tiny green pieces back there with the nice molded gold now we get to the part that matters articulation let me rotate the camera lens on my side so I'm not blocking anything and I can show you the moves the head gets a good amount of back and forth it's on a ball joint as well as on a secondary joint here in the neck so it will go back it will get that full exorcist twist in there a little bit of side to side and of course because of that the way the neck works you can get get Mr. Guy Kotsu's giggity giggity in there yeah <laughs> try not to block the camera as, as we know so over here at the arms uh oh well hmm I'll have to find out where that piece went oh it's on the table there I'm trying to position things so I can show you and not block it has full arm rotation here we have with the gun out of the way full come on focus bicep rotation there with more than a 90 degree flex the gun here also has mostly full rotation it does get blocked by the fins as you can see and it can be flattened out and extended should you want to do but you can keep them hung mostly flat down when you have the arm fully extended there's a little bit of waist rotation I say a little until I prove to you that it's got full 360 rotation at the waist that's super rare at the legs these are interesting skirts here these while they do go forward they also rotate inward so if you just needed that little extra leg room you can get a nice sit kick in there and we're gonna lean him back on this knee get this foot out of the way I'll explain those feet in just a second and I guess the feet, the, the, the feet have, those extra feet have to really get out of the way so we're gonna just pop that right out because you get almost 120 degrees on that let's see how far and absolute back kick with this other foot out of the way you get a full split he looks absolutely goofy looking like this putting him back down we go sideways I'm gonna turn the torso a little bit and once again absolute split look at that how many how many of your model kits in your collection actually can do the split both ways please tell me in the comments below I would like to see those the feet have a full swing back have a very hearty swing forward and some good side to side wiggle you can see the mechanics in there because the leg has to fold around for its transformation 
you can have it, you know, fully flattened like so. Fully flattened in the back. That way you get a lot more kick forward in whatever posing you need. That's, that's a mountain of articulation considering. Now the one little thing that was kind of getting in the way there just a second ago is back here where we have the Tyranno head. There are these fins that are part of the head and they simply plug in but they did totally get in the way so we're gonna pop them back in before getting the head back out of the way to show the back angle now these feet have this really interesting little gimmick on them of this like square-ish peg please focus that rotates I can't really show it too well, but it does rotate. I'm trying to not block the view, but anyway, you can see that I'm rotating it with my hand. I digress. So let me make sure they're opposite one another. These, the T-Rex feet, plug in and they're more or less substitute back skirts. They don't serve any function other than being in a place. And while the kit, the instructions say to have them stick out like that, I prefer to have them sit flat. It just looks better to me. Even so, it covers up some of that back thing. Gives it a, a back skirt kind of feel. And the ty Tyranno head just kind of protrudes out just like that. Now, hidden in between the tail, which was the two cannons, we have the Magna Blade. Or, let me actually consult the manual for the name. Because surely it's in here. Sure, it is stated. I'm going to flip through pages. Mm. Mm, nope, where were Oh yeah, the sword instructions were back here here during the laying and the tail actually. I do apologize for this sort of waste of time. Mm, it doesn't say. The back. I'm stupid. Why didn't I check the back first? Magna Blade! The Magna Blade also is inserted into the hand in a very strange and curious fashion because of the design of the hands. These hands, the only two hands you get, rather large, open, fisty hands, separate, I guess maybe similar to a master grade. You'll pull the thumb out, and if you're clever, you can just slide. Something on my table shifted, that was weird. You, you'll slide the blade into place there and then just plug the thumb unit back into position. Come on boy, you can do it. Get in there. There we go. And just pop that back into that nice socket. And there you go. You have the Magnosaurus one and only external accessory outside of the stand. However, and you'll be seeing a lot of this. All pieces that are not in use go on this large slab of white. Everything that's not in use, including the base adapters, if you want to go for the larger, like, 100 scale peg, or your standard 3 millimeter peg, everything will fit inside of here. You'll be seeing a lot more of that boy, and a lot more on it later on. Which will be here in just a moment, as we break out the boy, the man, the Gosaur, and see what happens when we kind of smush those two together. So we'll be right back. And here we have the Magna Buster. As is uh, very apparent, it is simply the Gosaur in its complete form with the added attachment of the Magnosaur as a backpack of cannons. On the side here we get the side profile. 
shows that the cannons go pretty dang far out. It is a combination of the tail parts here, which make up the barrel, the legs here, and a little bit of what is kind of the upper torso and head of the T-Rex, but this is really a unique backpack piece just for the attachment to the rest. However, over here is the rest. This is undoubtedly a parts former. You can see that it even has its own little attachment spot just for the pterodactyl's head to go right in here. But otherwise, every single piece that isn't attached to the uh, Gosaur or Magnosaur is located on the single white base. It's a very smart thing to do, and as I said earlier, it's something that only the the Double Zeta and thereby the Tryon and Dryon 3 have done similarly, at least that I've seen. I know that parts formers are, you know, pretty prevalent, but where do you store the extra parts other than kind of like off to the side, just like, well, here's a pile of parts. At least those pile of parts have somewhere to be in one collective space. So lastly, we will not show it on camera, of course, and get to the Super Soar Jet all combined and set together. We'll see you in just a flash. And lastly, here we have the super heavy, almost dangerously power-sized um, Super Soar Jet mode. As you can see, if you're familiar with the Gosaur, this is just the uh, Gosaur Jet here. I'm afraid to touch this. And up here is the same combination of extra backpack and legs, cannon tail combination for the backpack. It's just bolting on one to the other and assuming that the hammer space of Super Robots is where the rest of the T-Rex resides. If we turn it off here to the side, we can see that it is massively top heavy. It is too heavy. All of that, let's see if I can... All that is expected to fit on this hole and the weight of it causes those parts to separate so that's why it is already it has already fallen off. I had it balanced. We're going to try again. Dust yourself off and try it again. Try it again. Actually, here's a thought. We're going to try this. We're going to turn the attachment around. And let's... Because I've, I've learned in the past that this does kind of help. We will attach the stand with all of the angular stuff the opposite way. Plug that in there. It's not easy to see. And it fits in there, but then you have to balance it. And like I said, now that piece has been separated so it doesn't want to balance on its own. To note, the only difference between this setup here at the top and the setup for the uh, Magna Buster is that you will reattach the legs here and they will shove inside of the legs in a sort of collapsing fashion. Whew. So, in conclusion, we're going to cut back to the Magnasaur before this thing falls over. Then we will conclude. In conclusion, Xeon says, fund it. Now that we've got it back to a more tolerable and handle handleable form of the Magnasaur, it's really like an amazing piece of work that continues to persist in the quality that came from the Gosaur. Like even, even at the quoted 1 300th scale, they're still the same size, the same quality, sure it gets a little unwieldy because it's so large and that price tag can really kind of make it shy away from stuff, but it has that Bandai quality. If you're looking for something outside of Gundam, 
that's still on that same like almost size and like just easy to build kind of situation and you you don't want anymore or you already have the rest of the um, what is that show full metal panic collection then this is definitely a good experience and soon I didn't see this coming because I wasn't at that point in the show but soon we will have a third the trio has to be here they've already started and they can't just drop it again the price tag is probably gonna be the one big deterrent I've seen Ghost Horror on hobby store shelves going for around $45 but at the same time I've also seen the full metal panic kits going for $35 $40 and despite that price tag it's Bandai quality I'm not saying other companies are bad, but I'm saying that in this year of 2019, Bandai's quality is just up there, especially when you get to the level of like intricate detail inside of something that's from an 80s kid show. Like there are details in here that weren't even like animated. It's it's wonderful. It's glorious. Pick you one up. Go to New Type HQ. That's where I got mine. Find your boys online with the promo code. I happen to be an associate with Krosama, so go find his promo code. <laughs> As I rep my much more important associates. Uh, yeah, definitely pick you one up. Find it in the wild here in a couple of months. Surely you'll find them sitting next to it. And just stay tuned. Because you know as soon as that third boy drops, we on it. We on it. I thank y'all for watching, and as always, see you